The ANC has come out in support of the removal of the Israeli embassy in South Africa, while parties including the IFP, ACDP and FF Plus were against it. This follows a motion from the EFF for government to sever all diplomatic ties with Israel over its conflict with Palestine. Also in support is Gift of the Givers, after one of the humanitarian aid group's head, that's Ahmed Abbasi, was killed in Gaza. Let's unpack these developments around the conflict, bringing in former intelligence minister Ronnie Castrols, who joins us now via our video link for his reaction to this. Great to have you on the program, sir. Thanks, as always, for making time for Newsroom Africa. You know, it's not often that you have the ANC and EFF singing from the same hymn book around this, but that doesn't mean that this wasn't a contentious issue even in Parliament yesterday. When you look back at the debate, to what extent do you reckon South Africans could be proud of the moral substance of those discussions? Well, the EFF, the ANC, and those taking the correct moral and practical position were absolutely on song and sound, in my opinion and I'm sure in the opinion of many others, I would say that the opposition to the move, this historic and necessary move that Parliament is preparing to vote on, I think it's Tuesday coming, is absolutely, absolutely correct. And one applauds this resolution and the nature of the arguments that were put forward in its favour. Um, so I think that we will certainly see the culmination of this in the finalization on, on Tuesday next. And uh, at last, at long last, um, our, our government is taking a very and will be taking, and our country will be taking a important, a crucially important step towards what we had in South Africa when the world and certainly the majority, it wasn't the same colonial group of countries with the USA, Britain and Western Europe. They, they never went along with the approach. And of course we see where they're standing to this day, not even a ceasefire, and where their support base such as the DA and the Freedom Front Plus and so on. Um, ACDP, totally isolated and totally going against humanity, and the rational approach to forcing Israel, like apartheid South Africa was forced by this kind of step, to buckle under and to begin to desist from this absolutely horrendous project of Zionist settler colonialism of Israel going back 75 years, even before 1948, mm. the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians, the barbarism, um, the genocide that's been meted out to the people of Palestine, indigenous people. So we're following in the footsteps of a process which um, humankind the United Nations followed in terms of the freedom of South Africa. And right. the DA and others ought to have understood the history, but they don't want to because they the same old crowd. They absolutely show by their actions hmm. you know, that I, they are not in favor right. of resolving uh, a, a issue, a crucial humanitarian, political, just issue. Um, as was the case in South Africa, when the likes of them were opposed to the change until the very last moment. Sure. So I absolutely applaud what has taken place in Parliament, and we are waiting to applaud the culmination of this resolution next week. Congratulations to the EFF and the ANC and the other small parties supporting sure. it. And, you know, in a context where this is a numbers game in Parliament, it's pretty much a far gone conclusion. It's just a matter of getting to next week, as you've mentioned. But, you know, the hallmark of a good interlocutor is to disagree but still listen, right, to the other side. And I wonder if we can have a discussion about some of the issues that were raised by those who weren't necessarily for this motion. Among them is this notion that if we do cut all diplomatic ties, we lose whatever influence we have in that region. 
and that, by extension, uh, disadvantages the very people that South Africa uh, wants to protect. What's your response to that? Well, you know, you, you have um, articulated exactly, in a nutshell, their position. And it's actually quite humorous to observe. Not you. I mean, you've done your duty raising it in that way, putting it in a nutshell. Do you realize that's the exact same argument that Britain, the USA, France, in those dreadful dark days of apartheid, when we, people of this country, struggling people for freedom, and the anti-apartheid movement worldwide in the United Nations in its resolutions, um, we were arguing for that kind of the approach that we've ANC and EFF has enunciated, and those who were against expressed themselves in that very same way. <laughs> and, and we know how wrong they were and how they were forced to see a reality in the end. So it's, it's utter errant nonsense. It's utter errant nonsense. And one can just dismiss it outright as uh, the EFF and the ANC spokespeople did uh, in yesterday's debate. I mean, don't they see and don't viewers see that that argument just maintains a status quo, that Israel, and with this backing, this green light, this blank check that the USA has given it since 1948, with the billions and billions poured in uh, to build a military machine that can absolutely annihilate uh, neighbors, they've made war against their neighbors, Egypt and Syria and Lebanon, even up to 2006, etc., and the Palestinian people, that that's what they intend on doing and what the opposition and the DA in the stupid, inane position they took is just reinforcing that evil and injustice and the barbarism in terms of which we see now 11,500 Palestinians being butchered, 70% plus of them being 4,500 children and 3,500 or so women and the elderly. I yeah. mean, that's got to stop. And the only way to stop this monstrous colonial settlement apartheid regime that is Zionist Israel with the backing of this absolute imperialist USA wanting to use and having used Israel as its, its absolute warmonger for the Middle East to keep the Middle East under the control of the West, of the, of the USA. Yeah, right. I mean, that's the states there, and that's what's got to stop. We've got to stop it, and the DA, um, the Freedom Front Plus, ACDP, essentially, they, they band um, are, are playing at politics hmm. and they're going to root the day because the people of South Africa are seeing how monstrous and inhumane and barbaric Israeli apartheid is and must be stopped in the way that this resolution will add its weight to that of, of, of a global uprising of people who at last are coming to see through the deceit, the utter lies and falsehoods right. of what the Zionist project, which is a political doctrine, by the way, it's not being anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic. These are the weapons that apartheid used in terms of the Roy Chafar, the Svar Chafar in those days. It's exactly that. So people mustn't be kidded into it, those sure. who feel that, well, let's step back. It's all about two equal sides to a conflict, having to see sense, coming together, and we should assist that. This is not, as apartheid was as well, not a question of just two sides who have some kind of justice on both sides and ought to be uh, understood, and we should play yeah. um, the, the part of, of a neutral entity.
to help them to come together and find each other. Sure. Zionist Israel has demonstrated from the word go, it's not interested in anything other than the annihilation of the Palestinian people who are the indigenous people Running for Council. millennia lived in that country. Apologies and for interrupting you there. Robbed of it. And, and that's the essential issue. So it's totally asymmetrical. Yeah. It's not an equal struggle. My sincerest apologies for interrupting you. I'm just watching the clock. Um, you know, You've said multiple times now that you know, part of what you're relieved about is that there's a, a realization of what's taking place in the Middle East, at least from your vantage point. Um, but this won't be lost to people that this is one of the longest standing conflicts, possibly of our times, actually. And I wonder yes, to what extent you reckon there'll be a turning point now and what you base that on? Well, you see, in 1948... Israel got away with the ethnic cleansing of 750,000 Palestinians. Massacres at that time, brutality, terrorism wreaked against the indigenous people. Because the rest of the world didn't quite really know and couldn't follow it. And there was a Western narrative basically in sympathy with Israel. Obviously, relating to what happened in the Holocaust, which was not just about the murder of Jewish people, by the way, as atrocious and horrendous as that was. Today, ordinary people are seeing on the screens, as we can see, what Newsroom Africa projects. And most of these channels, especially if you look at Western ones, BBC, CNN, Sky News, whatever, French TV, German, etc., tend to be pro the Israeli position, but they have not been able to hide the fact of this barbarity that is being meted out as we speak to the Palestinian people. As we've pointed out, it's statistics, but every number has a, a face, a name, a life, etc. People are seeing it, and they are horrified. So the whole narrative is changing, unfortunately, at the expense of this incredible loss of life. And from that point of view, it's not going to be the same. And although Israel, like apartheid South Africa, with all the overwhelming resources of power compared to the resistance in our country or in Palestine, cannot win. They can destroy, they can reduce Gaza to rubble. The same is happening in the West Bank. But now they are being exposed. And you can see this in the United Nations, in the way uh, the General Assembly has voted, the way everybody's calling for ceasefire apart from Israel and, uh, and the USA, and maybe Ukraine abstaining, and a few Micronesian minor little islands. The people are seeing this, and this is bringing enormous pressure to bear on the power elites of essentially the Western countries. And the resistance, like our resistance, is holding out. And all the boasts of Netanyahu and his, quite frankly, I mean, absolutely cold-blooded butchers, you've heard the statements they make that the Palestinians are animals, they like cattle, and so on. We'll destroy them all. They're all supporters of Hamas. You know, sure. babies in incubators, little children aged three and five, and so on, the elderly, the woman. It's being seen as the lie it is, and the mask is falling. Right. And even in Israel, there are people who are standing up against us, like there were whites who could see the injustice and were stood up in South Africa. So I can't predict who can foresee uh, Israel is on the march of vengeance. What can stop it is international solidarity right. to enforce on those former colonial powers of the West and the USA to desist from the support. And that's why people must support boycott, divestment and sanctions. The right. program, similar to the anti-apartheid BDS program, that isolated South Africa and forced the change so that in the end, Jews and Christians and Muslims, and Bedouin, and Druze, and 
non-believers in right. Palestine live together in peace. Got you. Thank you. Certainly not mincing your words this morning. Appreciate your time on Newsroom Africa. Ronnie Castrols is the former intelligence minister here in South Africa, sharing his views, and I suppose many people um, won't necessarily be surprised given the history of the ANC and Ronnie Castrols' own involvement in the country's history itself. We'll continue watching what's taking place in the Middle East, get you sentiments from a number of vantage points as much as we can.